Hi, my name is Ken Supernaut. I'm the president of an advocacy group called the Advocates for Universal DPD, DPYD testing. We're here at ASCO because we want to raise awareness of this issue and seek to improve the standard of care. And I'm joined here with one of our medical advisors. Hi, I'm Daniel Hertz. I'm an associate professor at the University of Michigan College of Pharmacy, and I'm a medical advisor for Advocates for Universal DPD, DPYD testing. This is the second opportunity that we've had to participate in ASCO. And as uh, Dr. Hertz and I were just discussing a few moments ago, there's been a difference uh, that is showing an improvement in terms of awareness of the issue that we're raising. In the past, DPD deficiency has been dismissed as too rare a condition. And so that, what that did is it put patients who are preparing to receive a fluorouracil or capecitabine chemotherapy at risk because if they receive standard dosing and they have this deficiency, then their one in 20 people are um, may experience severe toxic reaction, delay treatments, and then some of those patients will end up dying. Our membership consists of people who have lost loved ones because they were treated without the screening and that they died after a single dose of the chemotherapy. So we want everyone, all medical oncologists, to test their patients for DPD deficiency before beginning capecitabine or fluorouracil treatment. This is standard of care across Europe and is now recommended by the FDA. We're seeing a lot of momentum towards major cancer centers starting to test their patients like Dana-Farber, but we know that there are a lot of patients who are beginning treatment without being tested first and receiving potentially unsafe overdose tox uh, treatment leading to toxicity and preventable deaths. And as we discover these new clinics that are, or I should say clinics that are new to introducing this testing, then we recognize them as leaders in the field. And our hope is, is that as we learn more of these institutes that are being progressive in adopting this, we're sharing that and we identify them so that others may follow suit in hopes that as Dr. Hertz pointed out, it does indeed become the standard of care in the U.S. so that we can, we can avoid deaths that are unnecessary if we were to have the treatment, excuse me, if we were to have the test. And it's important to have the test because most patients with this deficiency are partially deficient and that they are asymptomatic. In other words, if you were to look at me and look at Dr. Hertz or anybody else, I would challenge somebody to identify that they recognize this person has this deficiency. If they have this deficiency, then they are unable to uh, withstand the drug and there could be adverse reactions, as I mentioned before, that could lead to death. And it is really a horrible way to die because the person is essentially, the chemotherapy is destroying the internal organs. And when it's excreted, it damages the skin and it looks like it's a burn victim. So uh, we hope that next year when we're able to participate in ASCO, it's more of, well, how do we find out about the testing? How do we implement the testing? We hope that it's more people that are coming to us. We're on board with you. We've introduced this testing and we've documented that it is saving lives. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onca Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.